I want to talk to you. I'm not open my door, honey. Okay. Why? Because I get abused by you, your officers all the time. No. Okay. I just want to talk to you. Stop, don't, don't, don't touch my door. Stop, don't, don't, don't touch my door. Don't you dare. Don't you dare try to come in my house. On February 4th, 2024, Chief Satterfield and an officer from the Duncan Police Department in Duncan, South Carolina, stopped by Mary Grayson's house. This was a coordinated attack by the chief and his other officer, as they planned for one officer to try and break in through the back door while the chief broke in through the front. The one thing they never expected was to get owned, destroyed, and decimated through a ring doorbell. Both security cameras in the front and the back captured both officers violating Marie Grayson's Fourth Amendment right, trying to break into her home without consent or a search warrant. Two things we take away from this video. These cops are dirty, and Marie is a living legend. And as far as the chief goes, well, he's brand new to Duncan. And this police chief is looking forward to serving a growing community and bringing that community together. And word on the streets is you can really bring a community together because you can really get to know folks, especially if you're breaking into their houses without warrants. Hey, Dorothy, you home? Who's, who is this? This is uh, Chief Satterfield with Duncan yeah. PD. What, what do you need? Okay. No, sir, I will not. Okay. Well, I just want to talk no, to sir, you. I'm not open my door, honey. Okay, why? Because I get abused by you, your officers all the time. No. Well, I'm the new, I'm the new chief. I wanted to, to come talk to you. When have you ever heard a story of a new chief of police going door to door just because he wants to talk to folks and get to know them? The answer is never. A little bit of background here. Marie has quite a racist neighbor around the corner. He doesn't feel that someone of her hue is welcome in the neighborhood, so he's consistently calling the police to go and perform welfare checks. Well, these Duncan cops are just as good old boy as the neighbor is. This has nothing to do with engaging in community relations or being a part of community policing. This has everything to do with her being the wrong color for this neighborhood. I don't feel safe. I'm the new chief. I'm sorry? I'm not comfortable. You want, will you just open the door? You ain't got to come outside. Why you need to see me? I can see you. No, well, I can't you see you. See me. Okay. Well, I mean, I hear you behind the door. And, and again, you don't need to see me, honey. Okay, I just want to talk to you. Stop, don't, don't, don't touch my door. Stop, don't, don't, don't touch my door. Don't. So, question answered that we asked previously, right? This cop's not going around to say hello because he's the new chief of police in town. He's going to break in people's houses and enforce the ideology of racist neighbors. Let me break this down for you. You're an unwanted guest on Marie's property. You've been told that she has no interest in conversing with you. She's told you to leave. You don't like that, so now you're trying to open the door handle to force your way in. That's not community policing. That's trespassing and breaking and entering during the daytime. This cop should get his head out of the 1960s and wrap his mind around what he's going to be doing for the next 15 years, because combined, that's the amount of jail time he'd get for these types of felonies. Don't you dare. Don't you dare try to come in my house. Yes, ma'am. I'm not going to come in your house. I just want to talk to you. You're not trying to come in her house. You just tried opening the door after she asked you to leave, and this is what your buddy is doing in the back.
But sure, you're not trying to go in her house. Like I said, I'm the new chief. Yes, sir. So what would you be willing to talk to me about? About, tell me what happened to you. I'm here to investigate that. Really? Yes, ma'am. I'm out. I take that stuff serious. We schedule another time. No, ma'am. I need to talk oh, to no, you. No, well, I'm not. I'm not dressed right now. No, sir. Mm-mm. Okay. Well, I'll wait till you get no, dressed. You don't have to wait that long. Mm-mm. Now he wants to wait for her to get dressed, but he really wanted to see her when she wasn't. This isn't a fairy tale where stalking someone can somehow seem cute. This is real life, and Chief, you're a straight-up creep. And now famous, and not for community policing. No. Do you have an email address? Sorry. What happened to me? I'm sorry. Do you have an email address? I can send you what happened to me. No, no, ma'am. I'm more of a type to talk in person. Yeah, he's more of a type to talk in person. I mean, let's be honest. It's just so hard to effect an illegal arrest through email. You ain't got to come outside. Just open the door so I can see you. No, I am not. I don't feel safe open. For. I don't feel safe with you. I mean, I got another officer with me that, don't. that just Ooh, got... I, I mean, definitely don't, Ben. There it is. I was waiting for the cop logic. She doesn't feel safe with just one of your police officers there. The only thing that would make her feel safer is if there were two of your dirty cops. And the guy that was just breaking in the back door seems perfectly trustworthy to accompany the chief that was just trying to break in the front. I think we all feel safer now. Speaking of which, watch the chief's hand signals. He's now going to signal to the other officer to try breaking in the back door again. Both super trustworthy cops. Well, no. (laughs) You don't broke it to my house. Too many times. Yeah, I mean, broke in too many times with your little welfare checks. No, no, sir. Okay. Okay. Well, that, that's what I'm here to. I'm here to make church, make sure you're okay. You got family around here, Dorothy? What? Wait for it. Chief's about to check his cell phone as the other cop that just tried breaking in the back again is going to let him know that it's still a no go. A sad day when cops can't commit a simple breaking and entering without trouble. You got family Why? around here? Why? Do I not? I mean, have you talked to them? I mean, have they checked on you to make sure What's you're okay? What's supposed to be wrong with me? Here you go. What's supposed to be wrong with me? Oh, I'm not saying it's nothing wrong with me. You're talking about welfare no, checks. I said, you no, I it said up. that's what your officers do. They come here lying about a welfare check. Remember the, the white man called it in, Ron McConnell? Talk to Owens and see what they did, what they always do to me. They justify breaking into my house, lying about a welfare check. No good and well, they just saw me earlier that day, and they ambushed me. What? Well, like I said, Owens they don't even work with us anymore. Well, he did me wrong. Well, I mean, that's why I want a, I want a fresh start so we can build that relationship with the police department. Well, I'm not dressed right now, sir. But I okay. do have a boyfriend that's here all the time. <laughs> oh, your boyfriend no, is I there? No, I know. I say he's here all the time. No. Mm-mm. Okay. Well, when, when would be a good time to come back and talk to you? Ooh, good question. Let me just check my calendar here. Um, oh, Monday, no. Tuesday, eh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. On the 36th of Neverwary, perhaps? Or how about never? Because this right here is what you call a cop catcher. 
And with these bad cops, you, oh, ugh, you can never be too careful. By the way, shout out to Lackluster and Big Mike, who gave us both of those as wedding gifts. But they've also inspired me to maybe get a video of my own, titled Cop Owned Through Ring Doorbell. Make sure you subscribe to Marie. Her channel links and original video is in the description of this one. Stay smart, stay ahead of these cops, and that's the reason I stopped you today. In the past four years, I've done as much as I can with a camera until I finally decided that enough was enough. So I decided to create change from the inside out. Not just from within myself, but from within the government. I decided to run for office, and someone told me, well, as far as your candidacy goes, we've been in town a long time, and the people here have been here a long time, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it's not broke, don't fix it. The town is in the red. The committees and boards are not only being lied to, information's being withheld from them. And a superintendent that makes more money than the governor of this state is insulating his pockets. And to do that, he's selling off pieces of our school to private interest groups. And people would say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The system is broke. But it would take a real sheep to look at something obliterated and try and call it anything else but broke. Well, something else is broke. Our trust in the government, our trust in accountability, and our belief that a government of the people, for the people, and by the people will represent our interests. How can they care about our interests? They're only concerned with special interests. And your opinion is the last thing that interests them. The small town of Townsend, Massachusetts that I live in is much like any other town or city in these United States of America. The politicians would like you to think that you're turning a blind eye, but you're not. They're doing a great job at keeping your eyes closed. Because how can you make decisions on things that you don't even know about? People would be so quick to complain about the government, but they don't show up at the polls to cast a vote to change it. We need to vote. We need to be involved. If the government refuses accountability, we have to put them in a position where they don't have a choice. We have to remind them that they serve us, we the people. It takes a village, and I'm tired of the wolves walking around in mine. And we can beat these guys. These guys refers to politicians. Anyone who has a disdain for our constitutional inalienable rights. We can beat them with this. We can beat them with this. And we can beat them with this, our voice. My name is Josh Abrams, and I come from a small town just like Townsend. And I still believe that in a small town, you can dream big. And you need to have a government that represents you, a government for the people and a government by the people that represents your interests and not special interests. Right now, we have a superintendent whose collective budget and eight secretaries amass over $1.5 million. In fact, he makes more than the current governor of Massachusetts. And that salary is being used to insulate his position and make it stronger. Why Townsend residents, students, and parents get weaker by selling off portions of our public school systems to private companies and interest groups. I have one interest, we the people in this town of Townsend. That's why I'm running Select Board, to serve you, the people of Townsend. Hello. Hi, Josh. So we meet again for yes. the first time, though. Yeah, OK. <laughs> um, board of Selectmen, you have to write out your name. OK, so I'm the candidate here. Yep. Do you have my full name? Yep. All right, thank you very much. All right, much. you're welcome, Appreciate my friend. It. If you have any questions, give us a call. Yes, thank you. Yes, ma'am, will do. All Thanks right, very number. much. All right, Thanks. you're Take welcome. Care. See you later. Thank you. Last year in Townsend, only 1% of the population voted for what was going on in their neck of the woods and who would be representing them. I think it is everyone's duty to get out and vote for the change that you seek with the people that you need. And that's the reason I stopped you today. My name is Josh Abrams, owner and operator of YouTube's Accountability for All, civil rights activist, First Amendment auditor, 
and Board of Selectmen hopeful, and I approve this message.